So one of the main goals uh, in this particular section is learning how to solve recurrence relations. And we will continue to develop um, a variety of methods throughout the course, particularly when we get to chapter 8 in a few weeks. So what does it mean to solve a recurrence relation? So finding a formula for the nth term of the sequence generated by a recurrence relation is called solving the recurrence relation. So this means we find a closed formula for the nth term of the sequence. So if we are given a list of terms, we want to determine, and we're given a recurrence relation to define our sequence, right? A, a relation which tells us how to define it using previous terms of the sequence. We want to figure out how to represent that sequence in another way in a closed formula involving the variable n. So as I mentioned before, solving recurrence relations um, will develop a variety of methods for, for solving recurrence relations and this will be covered in chapter 8. At this point we just want to look at a couple of simple examples. Um, these, this method of iteration both forwards and backwards to basically guess the formula, and once we have a guess, we'll be able to prove that this formula is correct using the method of induction. Okay, and, and that will be covered more in depth in chapter 5 as well. Okay, so our first iterative solution for solving recurrence relations is working upward using forward substitution. So let's look at a particular example of a sequence defined by a recurrence relation and try and find a closed formula for it. So let's look at the sequence, the sequence defined by the following recurrence relation. So a sub n is equal to a n minus 1 plus 3, for n equal to 2, 3, 4, and beyond. And suppose that a sub 1 is equal to 2. So notice that this is our initial condition, and we are defining our sequence via this recurrence relation starting at 2. Okay, so we begin with a1 equal to 2 and we want to determine the values um, of the terms of the sequence starting from 2 and going up and trying to determine a formula for the a nth term where n can be any natural number or essentially positive integer because notice we're starting at 1 in this case. So a sub 2 is going to be a sub 1 plus 3, so that's going to be 2 plus 3. Now a sub 3 will be a sub 2 plus 3 again. So notice we could have solved this and put 5 here, but because we want to find a formula, we want to keep this pattern going to see if we can determine a formula to um, denote this pattern. So let's keep this fixed and continue to add 3 to each of the terms and see if we can work out the particular formula. So a sub 3 is going to be 2 plus 3 plus 3. So a sub 2 plus 3, which is 2 plus 3 plus 3. So now notice that we have 2 plus 3, so we could write this again as 2 plus 2 times 3. Okay, now if we leave it in this form, we'll see we, a, a formula developing. So a sub 4 is equal to a sub 3 plus 3, so 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 3. You could have kept this formula here, so 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Essentially, we would see that we would get 2 plus 3 times 3. Now notice a pattern developing here. We're taking 2 and adding this number minus 1 times 3 each time. So notice that 2 times 3 is 1 less than 3. 3 times 3, this 3 is 1 less than 4. So we have developed a pattern. So we know that a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus 3. And we know that our pattern tells us that a n minus 1 is equal to 2 plus n minus 2 times 3. Right? This subscript minus 1 more multiplied by 3. So 2 plus n minus 2 plus 3 plus 3 gives us 2 plus 3 times n minus 1. So essentially, we could have generalized this without this step to say, okay, well, at 4, it's 2 plus 4 minus 1 times 3, so a sub n is going to be 2 plus n minus 1 times 3, right? 
this minus 1 times this. And so we could then use induction to check that this formula actually is a formula for this recurrence relation, and, and we can do that in class. Let's look at method number two. So instead of working forward or upward, we're going to work downward uh, using backward substitution. So we're going to use the same recurrence relation and develop the same formula, but in a different way. So let a sub n be a sequence that satisfies the following recurrence relations. So a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus 3 for n equal to 2, 3, 4, right? So take the previous term and add 3 to it. And we're going to begin with the same initial condition, a1 equal to 2. So instead of starting at a1 and going forward, we're going to start at a n and work our way backward. So what does that mean? So we're going to start with our recurrence relation. So a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus 3. And then we're going to substitute in our formula for a n minus 1. So a n minus 1 will then be the previous term, so a n minus 2, which is a n minus 1 minus 1. So a n minus 2 plus 3. So we're substituting that in for a n minus 1. So this plus 3 comes from this plus 3 at the end here. So then that means we have a n minus 2 plus 2 times 3. Continuing now, we want to substitute in for a n minus 2, so that means subtracting one more um, from the subscript here. So we get a n minus 3 plus 3, right, plus 2 times 3. So we substitute in for a n minus 2 and add what's left over. And notice this becomes a n minus 3 plus 3 times 3. Okay, so now let's analyze what we have here. So notice that we want to figure out how to represent this number in terms of our subscript here. So notice that 3 is equal to n minus n minus 3. Okay, so this is how we develop this formula here. So, so we discover that if we get to a2, that means we take a2 and we add to it n minus 2. So n minus whatever this subscript is here will follow the same pattern up, multiplied by 3. And then notice that a2 we know is equal to a1 plus 3, so we substitute that in and uh, add it to our previous pattern, and collecting all these like terms and substituting in for our value a1 equal to 2, we get 2 plus 3 plus 3 times n minus 2, which is 2 plus 3 times n minus 1. And notice this is the same as a1 plus 3 times n minus 1, just like we got a n equal to a2 plus 3 times n minus 2. Okay, and notice that this is the same formula as we got in the previous method. And again, we can use induction to prove that this formula um, satisfies this recurrence relation or is a solution to this recurrence relation. Now, this may have been difficult to follow in the video, so if you have um, difficulty, you can certainly request in class on Monday that we go through this example a little bit more slowly and for you to be able to ask questions. Okay.